Hello again everybody, it's UXW Bill here with you to talk about batteries. Now if you watch no other part of this video, and I'm sure that most of my subscribers and regular watchers, given their familiarity with this stuff, they know this by heart. You put something away, take the batteries out of it. Because if you don't, what happens is they leak all over everything, they corrode, they make a huge mess, and in the severest of cases, they ruin equipment. Take this fine little General Electric Bathmate radio. I found this at a garage sale in a box of random electronic stuff marked one dollar. And as it turns out, it was sitting there and it was keeping time. So I thought, well, you know, that's kind of interesting. Obviously, it's been used regularly. And then I flipped it over. And I saw the nasty brown acid leaking out of the back of it from the batteries. When I opened it up, all of the batteries, the 4C cells were completely gone and the little double A cell that keeps it keeping time was gone as well. The whole back side of this thing was covered in nasty red fallout from the batteries. So I plunged it into the sink and I scrubbed it off with the dish brush as best I could and this is the only sign that it's left. But if you look inside you'll see that the damage has been done and although I've cleaned it up well enough that it works and put brand new batteries in it it's still in pretty bad shape and there's no telling what's gotten inside to the electronics and affected them but even so it sounds nice Interesting. Brahms included only two quotations Underneath it in the box were these two things. And they too had been damaged by the fallout. Here's the second one. They had that nasty orangish red goo all over them as well. And I think at least in the case of this little player, it damaged the speaker. Of course, they aren't the only thing that can be damaged. A lot of devices that you plug into the wall have the ability to accept batteries too such as for to keep station memories going and things like that. This little Technics SA201 receiver, which is otherwise in very nice shape, is no different. It has a set of batteries in the back that can be used to keep the memory going. And once again, it's hard to open this door, but once again, the same kind of thing has happened. Now in this case, it's nowhere near as severe except for this one top terminal but it's still unnecessary. So everybody, if you watch no other part of this video, save yourself a lot of hassle and a lot of heartache and just take the batteries out of stuff before you store it away and check on them regularly. Now if it's too late and it's already happened, this video is going to tell you a little bit about what you can do to try and fix the problem and regain the use of your device. Not all of them are fixable. Sometimes the battery terminal just has taken so much abuse from the chemical that has spilled out upon it that it breaks off if you try to clean it. But most are somewhere in between. And everything here, this, the other two, this stereo receiver should all be salvageable. So tonight I'm going to demonstrate what you can do to fix them. You'll need some screwdrivers, Phillips and bladed both, an old toothbrush that's fairly clean, you know, don't use one that's caked in toothpaste, some mildly hot or warm water, and a little bit of baking soda to help gently dissolve the chemical. But you have to be careful with the baking soda because if you get it somewhere where it's not necessary, you may cause other damage to the circuit. And of course, if you're working on something that plugs into the wall like this stereo receiver, you really want to unplug it. Otherwise, you may get a surprise. So let's get started. Now in the case of this little stereo receiver, this battery compartment can actually be brought free of the unit and worked on with only moderate amounts of swearing and violence, certainly not enough to require a prescription. While we're in here, you can also see the little stereo power amplifier and you can see the little power supply. This thing's really not made to belt it out. Now there's the tuning microcontroller and its demands for power when it's in standby seem to be pretty darn minuscule. The data sheet for that NEC microcontroller, which is actually a hardwired device, made only to be an AM, FM, and long wave tuner, say that in standby mode it consumes less than 10 milliamps worth of power. So it ought to be able to run off a set of batteries or even a filter cap since this thing seems to hang on to its memories pretty well when it's unplugged for hours. It ought to run for a very long time on very little power. So it's probably easy to forget the batteries in this thing. 
But anyway, getting back to the subject here, you can't always count on this because a lot of equipment has the battery cover, the battery compartment molded into the body plastic of the device where you simply can't separate it. But the idea is pretty straightforward. All we have to be able to do is get in there and be able to scrape those contacts clean and then put a new set of batteries in, all the while trying to keep our cleaning solution of baking soda and hot water both stirred up and out of the rest of the circuitry of the unit. This is where the old toothbrush comes in. The idea is to neutralize and get rid of as much of that paste as you can. If it's working, you should start to see a pond consisting of that old gunk coming off of it as you scrub it with the toothbrush. Now the baking soda, as you can clearly see, has definitely produced an improvement at both ends of the contacts in this little battery box. But it's only going to take you so far. To get the rest of it, you're going to have to resort to scraping. You might have to use sandpaper or dental picks or something like that, but most of the time a bladed screwdriver applied gently can do the job. Actually, whatever you use, be very gentle with it because the contacts may be degraded to the point where they'll break. And if you break them, you're going to have to figure out how to replace them, which may or may not be a whole lot of fun. Now, it's very unlikely that you're going to be able to get it to look brand new again, but you should be able to get the contacts to look at least passable. You don't have to worry too much about corrosion that's in other places where batteries don't directly connect, but any corrosion that's on the terminals, you need to get that cleaned up. And then when you're done, if at all possible, take a bowl of clean water and flush the baking soda residue out of your battery compartment. You'll notice that some additional corrosion will come out with it, so in the end that just helps. Then thoroughly dry everything, or wait for everything to dry out, put the unit back together, install some batteries and it's almost you're almost done there's just one more thing to check for now after you've finished all your cleaning the one thing that you really have to do to make sure that it was effective or to see if more drastic measures are required load batteries in your device in the proper way and if its function is obvious you can probably just turn it on and see if it works but in the case of this where the functionality or lack thereof is not immediately obvious we'll have to do a voltmeter test so hook up the voltmeter, set it to its DC volt scale, and hook up the voltmeter appropriately to the battery holder and see if you measure the right amount of voltage. This is actually reading a little high because these are brand new batteries. They're Rayovac alkalines. I probably could have gotten away with the Rayovac carbon zinc batteries because carbon zinc batteries are typically good for things that have very low loads over a long period of time. But, when I looked at the back, I saw the carbon zinc ones were made in China and the conventional alkalines were made in the U.S. and I knew which one I'd rather end up putting into a vintage piece of stereo equipment, so I went with the alkalines. Something else you might consider doing when you're all done and you've put your new batteries in and cleaned up the mess, you might consider cutting a piece out of a notepad after you write the date where you put the batteries in on it and then taping that to the back of the unit. Just like that. Then, now maybe you won't remember, but then, whenever you do something that you will remember, such as changing your smoke detector batteries, which hopefully you have, just go around and check all your battery-operated devices and see what their date is. And if it's getting close to the expected lifetime of the batteries, or it seems like it's been a year or two, go ahead and just open the door and have a look at those batteries and make sure they're not doing anything evil. And then, before buttoning up your device, just go ahead and double-check that it does indeed seem to be working properly. And in this case, I think it's safe to say that it probably is because it is maintaining the station memories that it has had stored in it. So there you have it. Hopefully you won't ever have to recover something like this from battery damage because you'll take the batteries out, but if you ever get something from a third party or you make a mistake and forget, this is one of the ways that you can recover from it and it's nothing that you can't do within the comfort and privacy of your own home.